Get your medieval geek on with Shadowversity hoodies. Available through Teespring. Link in the description. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and welcome back to the series that I haven't properly named yet, where I look at the best medieval weapons for a certain fantasy creature. Maybe I could call it best weapon for fantasy creatures. See, it's too wordy. Best weapons for fantasy creatures. Real world weapon reconnaissance? <laughs> I don't know. We'll, we'll get there. We'll figure something out. This is just like, what, the eighth or maybe even ninth video I've made in the series? Still don't have a name. But anyway, yes. In this episode, we're going to be looking at a very unique kind of a fantasy creature. Quite common in many different fantasies. Uh, but one that you might not necessarily consider uh, one that would use weapons quite readily. And that is the fairy. Now, what I just said is actually quite true, so much so that I didn't think uh, I could cover the fairy in this series because it just didn't strike, like, what type of weapons could really, could they really use? And they're not generally given an iconic weapon that they're always using, though having said that, in, term, uh, in certain depictions of the fairy and stuff like that, if they are using weapons, it seems to be like rapier-esque needle kind of weapons, sometimes even very small bows. So there's a couple of things to kind of consider and so, to see if those kind of weapons would be effective or not. And then of course I'll be sharing with you uh, a weapon that came to my mind after pondering about this wonderful nerdy question in, in depth. Yes, I have thought of a weapon that, my goodness, oh. So we'll get there, all right? Uh, the first uh, first thing to consider, when we always consider, uh, you know, these fantasy creatures in the in this series, is what type of fantasy creature, because just like all the other creatures, there are different versions. Now, when I look at the fairy, I do feel there is a fairly standardized kind of interpretation, which is a creature of about yay big. Sometimes they're like really small, sometimes they can be a bit bigger, but I think about, you know, yay big fairy, is what we really think about, or what fairies are more often shown to be. Then, of course, they can fly, and sometimes they go, sometimes they don't, sometimes they have magic, sometimes they don't. Well, this isn't a discussion about magic, and because uh, that is very much dependent on setting as well. Uh, primarily, we're going to be looking at physical characteristics, and so the biggest one, of course, is flight. And they seem to be able to fly decently fast, faster than, at least as fast or faster than a human can run, and they have great maneuverability with their flight, where they can zip around all over the place, they can move, stop really quickly, and then move in another direction, which is a much higher level of maneuverability than say birds have. But then, of course, we have certain other issues like strength, and a fairy obviously would not be very strong at all. So those are the physical characteristics based on the more standardized kind of interpretation that seems to be how fairies are represented across the board. And in regards to environment, uh, I don't really think their environment will be affecting their weapon choices too much. Uh, maybe in regards to resources, but uh, one of the interesting things about fairies, they're very small, so they don't need a lot of resources and they could just steal it from other people. In fact, that does seem to be one of the main ways in which fairies have uh, sometimes been shown to get their weapons. They, you know, pick up a needle and they use it as a rapier kind of thing. But they seem intelligent enough and I think they'd be able to craft smaller versions of many different types of weapons and they can just steal those materials from the big people. So uh, I think uh, our options are very open in regards to that. And now let's look at certain types of weapons. And one of the first things is just kind of consider these needle kind of rapiery things that fairies have. Would they be dangerous? <laughs> Tricky, okay. For a human, that'd be very annoying, okay. And I'm sure getting a, like a, a long pointy thing out into fairies this big, Interesting thing, okay, the square cube law works very much in a fairy's favour. So though their strength would be much, much smaller in regards to a human, the uh, comparative ratio of weight that they could lift in comparison to their own weight would actually be much higher. You see, when something reduces in size, its mass or weight reduces at a much greater rate. And this is the same when you're increasing it. So if you were to take a cube and double a cube in size, well, you've doubled it size, but in terms of its surface area, I think you increase that by a factor of four, and its internal volume, you've actually multiplied by a factor of eight. 
So this is why ants are considered to have such great strength. And it's not really because if you would increase an ant's size, they would be the strongest creatures in the world. No, because as you increase in size, the strength that they have uh, needs to be dedicated more and more to supporting their own weight. But when you reduce something, they re it requires far less strength to support their own weight because their weight is reducing at a much greater you know, ratio in comparison to just their size reduction, which means that they can dedicate more strength to lifting external things. So in actual fact, if you were to take an ant and increase it to the size of a human or even an elephant, their legs wouldn't be thick enough to even support their own weight and their muscles wouldn't be able to do it and they'd probably, their legs would probably snap under their own weight and they wouldn't even be able to move. So the thing about, you know, giant ants being incredibly strong, no, not true. But this is very interesting in regards to the, the sizes of weapons that a fairy would be able to use, okay? Uh, whenever you see artworks of fairies using weapons, stuff like that, the ratio always seems to be at the same ratio as a human with a sword, okay? When in actual fact, the type of sword that a, a fairy would be able to pick up and swing around with a decent amount of ease, certainly with combative kind of moves, could be closer to the, sa the same size as themselves or even double the size of themselves. So you remember, you see like in fantasy guys using swords that are just insanely huge in comparison to their own size. Well, in regards to fairies and the sizes we're looking at and the types of strength that they would have in a, a percentage ratio to the size of things, their actual weapon sizes would be, in my opinion, far larger in comparison to their own size than what we are naturally used to. So you have a fairy about that big. If they're using, say, a rapier thing, the rapier actual needlepoint could be twice as long as themselves and they'd still be able to use it really quickly and effectively. So this raises the next very important question about this. How deadly would a needle kind of sword e weapon be in the hands of a fairy? And uh, we've just considered a very significant point here is that this needle weapon would be much bigger than we probably would have supposed in regards to the size of a fairy because it wouldn't be the size of a rapier in the terms of ratio percentage scale. It wouldn't be the same percentage scale as this to human. We can expect it to be much longer. So the actual rapier thing could, instead of being yay big to, uh, you know, you know, human ratio sizes, it could be about this big. And suddenly a spike, okay, a needle weapon this big is far more deadly, <laughs> all right, than something this big that only had the width and weight of a needle. Something this big that you could put in spike, you know, realms. All right, through the eye, you're dead. That, that, that's a lethal strike right there, like in, in an artery maybe and stuff like that. Combine that with the insane amount of speed and agility fairies have while flying. That's already getting pretty darn scary. You be flying around things. And because a fairy is so small, right, the open areas, if they're fighting against a human, are massive open targets in comparison to them. Getting through an eye slit, you know, for a, like a human's helm, if they're wearing a helmet, getting through that isolate on a human helmet is a lot easier for a fairy than it is a human. This is a big open target. And with their flight, they just fly in quickly and they can fly out from the back and zip around and then spike through the eye into the brain. The human's dead. Ugh, already fairies are so much more lethal than we might have considered. Because think about trying to fight against this, okay? A fairy is a very small target, all right? Um, and this isn't even the same as trying to hit a baseball bat we oh sorry, I'm trying to hit a baseball with a baseball bat because uh, it depends what type of weapon you have. And one of the more common ones is swords. And a sword has a much smaller surface area and striking kind of line than what a baseball bat has. That's why baseball bats are round and thick. So there's more chance of you actually hitting the ball or the target. So if you're fighting against a fairy, you'd be actually better off using, you know, a baseball bat type weapon or, or a tennis racket or something to give you more chances of hitting this small zippy flying around thing because hitting it is going to be so much more difficult. And then if you're missing it, you can't, you know, fight the thing off and then bang, spike through the eye. Oh gosh. So already I think, a, yeah, a rapier-like spike weapon is very effective for a fairy. So, which seems to be a common type of weapon ascribed to them just in the incorrect way. I think it would be much, much larger than what they're often shown. And with that size comes a much greater level of lethality. The next interesting weapon that fairies are often uh, given are like very scaled down bow 
uh, types of weapons. Now, the bow effect would have the exact same effect in terms of the ratio and size scale, in which a fairy, I feel, would be able to use a much larger bow in comparison to its own size than what a human can in comparison to the human size. And so if a fairy is, say, yay big, the bow that they are using is probably this big. But is that enough to reach lethal level projectiles? Not really, in my opinion. And really, why do fairies need to use projectile weapons when they're a projectile in and of themselves? They can project anything while holding it and just go right into the target, which uh, increases their aim so much higher, for the, you know, because they can get right in close, point blank range in comparison to them. So no, it's useless fairies using projectiles when they are the projectile. So throw bows or smaller scale down bows out the window. Now the other kind of uh, seemingly obvious weapon type thing that fairies would use they would assume to be poisons but poison isn't really a weapon in my opinion that's something you put on weapons to increase their lethality potential. So yeah poisons me I'd rather focus on the best kind of weapons because yeah you could put poisons on their spike rapier kind of sword things but I don't really think it's completely necessary because generally for uh, you know humans if they're fighting against humans and stuff like that they have a direct target that is perfect to try and strike at the eyes completely and adding poison to a spike that goes through someone's eye into their brain uh, does it wouldn't really increase its ability to kill someone uh, than if it didn't have poison. So poison. Mm. Now this really is one of the more, most effective kind of weapons that I can uh, that is coming to my mind. But there is another variant on these uh, scaled down swords or a sword scaled appropriately to a fairy size than just a uh, big. Uh, pokey spiky thing and that is in cutting. Now cutting is interesting because uh, dependent on the situation you do need a certain level of strength to perform a good cut but that is because of many factors. Uh, edge alignment uh, is one, the type of material you're cutting into, the thickness of the uh, cutting implement. All right, uh, The thicker the cutting implement the harder it is to do deep you know severe cuts combining that with the sharpness of it as well. So when I say thickness I am talking about the distal width of a sword blade. Then there's edge alignment and which part on the body you're actually striking into. We humans don't have perfect aim, like competent swordsman or warrior can generally hit in the roundabout area he's aiming for, but pinpoint accuracy? You don't see people often just doing thrust right through eye sockets and stuff like that. They need to aim for the general area and if they want to really do pinpoint accuracy they resort to half sorting and things like that. So strength comes into play where if you're aiming for the neck and you miss and you just get the skull, uh, if you really want to do a devastating cut right through into a skull or even right through, strength very useful. So when it comes to cutting through thick material like bone, Definitely strength. Now, fairies don't have that, but if they were to use bladed-like weapons, uh, they might not actually need nearly as much strength as what we humans need to do lethal cuts. The first thing to consider is what type of bladed weapon would best suit them in regards to their physical characteristics. And uh, when I think about it, I think like long razor blade kind of weapons. And already it can be much larger in comparison to its size as we've kind of discovered in this video already. So if a fairy is this big, the sword or bladed, you know, razor blade with a handle kind of thing wouldn't have to be that big. It could be up to this big. And think about how thick like, it would actually need to be for a fairy. So we really are talking about a razor blade, maybe half a mil thick. Because if you have a look at, you know, pick up a razor blade if you have it or a scalpel, okay, and have a look how thick those blades are. They are like half a mil thick to a millimeter, all right? Now the reason being is because by having a blade so thin, it needs to push aside less material to cut in and combine that with an insanely sharp edge with one of the most acute and fine edge angles, you have a blade that can cut so easily and need almost no strength behind it to get really deep. And they don't have the strength to try and deflect blows or anything like that, so they don't need a, a robust edge that can handle, you know, a lot of damage like swords need. They can just focus on the thinnest, finest, but most crazy sharp, you know, blades. So imagine that, like a fairy with like a razor blade, basically, this long, in hand, with light is flying around, lightning fast, and so you got a guy, you got a human, and you're flying, and imagine this, um, if, if, they do, if they do glow, so not all fairies do, there's ball light flying, 
and suddenly someone's wrists are just cut open and they have no idea what happens but uh, then arteries are like even worse you're, you're trying to fight a, th a fairy and this flash of light or just a blur zips past and suddenly your entire neck has been cut open arteries blood just <laughs> and then it's off and you can't fight against it and you're just dead all right the only way you could defend against it is with uh, significant armor but with significant armor you still need to see and so their backup weapon could be that big spike sword thingy. So now fairies are basically tiny balls of unstoppable death. And we already know they're fast, they don't seem to get tired from flying, so you wouldn't really be able to outrun them. Gosh, the odor... <laughs> what could you do to survive things? Call up and curl, curl up into a ball? Throw someone else behind you? Let them get slashed to death? Their, you know, necks and wrists slashed open, the backs of their knees, tendons sliced so they can't run away, and then getting finished off with a big spike through your eyeball? Gosh, maybe fire. Are fairies afraid of fire? I don't know, that's a, that's a more specific setting kind of thing. But if you are going to use these ideas in any, you know, medieval fantasy setting and stuff like that, it might work well to have something fairies particularly hate. And maybe, like, because imagine, like, uh, you know, a small flame this big to a fairy is suddenly bigger than itself. And so waving a big, you know, fire torch at a fairy could engulf it in flames. And if their wings are flammable, well, you might be able to fight them off that way. So, so that, that's a setting kind of thing. And I just have to add, what a great setup for, like, a horror fantasy fantasy story where you got some adventurers trying to get through a wood that's infested with fairies out for your blood. You have to keep the torches lit. If the torches go out, they're dead. They'll come in and slash us to ribbons. Keep the torches lit. But if they're able to dodge it and stuff like that, fairies are just crazy, scary, evil, deadly little balls of insanity. Run away, be you're dead. But there we go, I think that those would actually be the best weapons uh, for a fairy to use, alright? So basically razor blades that are twice the size in comparison to themselves, as well as spikes with the same, you know, size ratio, and uh, oh, they're scary. So it has been an absolute pleasure in thinking up ways to make scaries a thousand times more dangerous and scary than they have, you know, being considered previously, perhaps, maybe, I don't know. But I love making these videos. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed, and I do hope to see you again. But until then, farewell.